Greetings to you all, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. I trust by the grace and the mercy of the Almighty God. We, we all have a great moment in um, fellowshipping with one another and fellowshipping with the Almighty in the day that is a sign pointing us back to the creation and to the Father who is one and true God and um, his son our own soon coming king and today he is our great high priest in the heavenly sanctuary um, and the final work of atonement is now taking place and to him today he is busy pleading for each one of us so we are here only by his grace so let us be thankful for such a great high priest like him so today uh, it is the second day in our Christian week calendar it is the second day and um, today I would like us to look to some of the things which I believe that we need to look so closely to them so that we can be able to understand what is really going on you know we Recently, in our past um, Sabbath school lessons, to those who are still actually worshipping and the fellowshipping um, under the General Conference um, churches, well, if you if you have checked to the mission reading, the mission reading was dealing with the the Christmas, and um, on the mission reading, actually, he tell us that there was this lady who was busy making the musical coloration, you know, in making um the mu the christmas time christmas moments to be a blessing to the people surrounding them and uh, she was making so nice music and uh, all the stuff and then her grandfather become an adventist because of her great work so um we are now even now finding that we the people that says that they are the remnant they actually in line with the world because you know I, I don't think um, so many people understand the biblical text in the book of Revelation chapter 14. Because if we are to be true to the biblical text, in re if you read in the book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 through 5, it tells us that a remnant are a people who are not defiled with the woman. And to be def and not defilement, it deals with the, the adoption if you feed on false doctrines. Because it is the only doctrine that it makes a person to be defiled when you eat from the wrong source now we are now finding uh from um our so-called the remnant the just continue with the work like little from did little from go to the babylonian churches to find the source where you can able to use as a tool to pollute people's minds. Now the people's minds are so clouded, they cannot be able to reason, which is now a reason why we are now finding that this current movement, it is now also in harmony with the belief of other churches of the Trinity. Because Lire from when he searched from the writings of Ellen White, because I understand that the Adventist, the, um, we believe that Ellen White was inspired and also we value writings. But I would like to advise you, my friends, wherever you are. See, we are in the periods of the end times and it is so important for you and, and I to examine, to know the source. Because Leroy Edfrom was the agent, was a tool used by the enemy to change the writings of Ellen White. So there are some of the people like nowadays who are no longer reading their Bibles. They just go and read the writings of Ellen White. But I want you to know that the writings of Ellen White, it is a lesser light. Ellen White was given some of the things to make some other things to be clearer to those who 
uh, might find it so difficult to understand the pure Bible. So, the writings with the lesser light. But now, I will not advise you to value those writings if you don't even know the source. Because the general conference has done so much changes and deletions and uh, adding some of the things in those writings. And I know very well that on the outer covers of those books, in you know, there's a picture of Ellen White and everything just look great. And um, if you read, you know, everything that is written inside them, it sounds good. But you need to know your Bible, your foundation. Some of you, you are angered in church. Some of you, you are not angered in Christ. And very soon, I will tell you this, and I will tell you again. The time will come. And it is just beforehand. And your ministers, those that advocates for the Christmas times, for the Trinitarians, they will actually tell you to worship on Sunday. If we could adopt the Babylonian worship and the feast days in our midst, if we found no problem in the Feast the keeping of the Christmas. You said, well, you don't keep the feast, but you were having some Christmas trees inside your church buildings. Some of you, you're buying some Christmas, uh, Christmas gifts to give to your children. And some of you even go on to celebrate and you believe that Christ was born on the day of the 25th of December. So, you see, this is the confusion which is busy, promoted, and been uh, um, imposed on people's minds day in, day out. On the Sabbath, all the members were celebrating and the time for the missions. And then um, I know there is uh, another writings as well where it has been said in the writings of Ellen White where she said that on the Christmas, this day commemor commemorates the birth of our Redeemer. I have, to, I have a question. Did Christ, or was Christ born on the 25th of December? Who was born on that day? Where in the Bible can we find that text that says Christ was born on the 25th of December? If you have that text, please, I'll... Um, Suggest that your post on our um, your post or email us. I would like to see that text, or you can comment below, so that we can able to see where it states that Christ was born on the twenty fifth of December. But I will tell you that if you you understand, Bible says in the book of John, um, the book of um. John chapter 4. I want us to read something a little. Because some of us, we worship the things that we know not. So like, let us turn our Bibles in the book of John chapter 4. And I want us to read verse 21, 22, and 23. And 24. So let us read our Bible. Jesus said to her, Women, believe me, the hour is coming when you neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You shall you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in his spirit and in his truth. For the Father is seeking for such to worship him. God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You worship what you do not know. That is what Christ has to say. You see, 
Many people, they believe and were taught to believe that on this day, it is the day that commemorates the birth of Christ. And I'll tell you that many of us worship what we do not know because on that particular day, some they fast, some they go, uh, go on to the mountains to pray, to spend more time and doing all kinds of um, commemoration and uh, doing all the ceremonial stuff. They do what they do according to their belief, according to their religion. So in every religion, they do have their way of worship and commemorating and doing their customs. But Bible say now, you worship what you do not know. Because on the day of the 25th of December, Christ was never born. But there was a man who is, um, was born on that particular day. If you turn our Bibles in the book of um, Genesis, which is the, the, the Genesis of everything. We read in the book of Genesis chapter... Um, Let's turn our Bibles in the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis. All right. Genesis chapter 1. So in the book of Genesis. Now. I want us to read from this. Um, which is the beginning. Genesis chapter 10 if you read in the book of genesis 10 it tells you about um kush with the son of uh, of noah and the, then kush begot nimrod and nimrod was known as a great hunter and um, he was also a king or a leader during his time he reigned and uh, his first kingdom was babel and to many of us, we understand it, which is the fact, which is the, 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 the way we are finding this term Babylon. Babylon is derived from Babel. Now, Babylon was, or Babel was his first kingdom to rule. And this man was worshipped, and his wife, her name was called Semiramis. And we all know the story, which is the beginning, and which is the reason why you need to pay a good attention. To this message because it is of vital importance. N Nimrod, then after his death, then we now find Semiramis have been found with the pregnant, and they believe that um, she was pregnant by uh, the sun god because Nimrod was worshipped as the sun god or the life giver. They were worshipping the sun. So when he died, they began to worship the sun every day, early in the morning, they were going to a particular place where they do their ceremonial things in welcoming the sun, the rising sun. So, now, uh, after they've been found with the, with, with the pregnant, then she begot a son, and his son was named Tammuz. And then we found the story of Tammuz going on, and now it deals again in the book of Ezekiel chapter 8. We read again in the book of Ezekiel chapter 8, when the children of Israel... After having been delivered from the land of bondage of the land of Egypt, then they go to the land where which is supposed to be the land of the promise. Then on their way to the land of promise, what happened? God took unto them in the book of Exodus that they should not learn to the ways of the heathens. Because the heathens are the only people who were worshipping the rising sun. And on the particular day, on the 25th of December, that is when the heathens were gathering together and worshipping what? The birth of their sun god, whose name was Tammuz. And then if you read again, go down with the text or the, the whole context in the, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 8. We are now finding their women were gathering and crying for who? They were crying for Tammuz. Read the whole text in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 8. So, uh, we're not getting the full picture. Their elders were now gathering and with their face facing the rising sun. As I've said, that Nimrod was the father and also the God, the life giver, which is the, the sun god. And Tammuz, the son of the sun god, was now, uh, now their women's, we're now crying or weeping for him. Now, so this is the a short uh, summary on the 
on, 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 on this issue. So, to our brothers and sisters out there in the world, to all who are saying, on this day, it is good for us to commemorate the birth of Christ. I will tell you that you are not okay in your senses. You are not true to the biblical text because the Bible had not said so. So if the if something it is not found in the Bible, it should not be celebrated. And again, you said that you are not feast keepers. Therefore, why are you involved in the in the in the feast of the of the heathens? This day, it is the feast day of the heathens. Number two. What does a Christmas tree has to do with the birth of Christ? What does those eggs on the Christmas trees has to do with the day and the birth of Christ? So you see, merely something is be believed for so many years. It doesn't make it true. I understand that at first it did not make no sense. But now it does. Because... There are people that sit on the high places. They say that they are the remnant, but they are not true remnants of God. Because the remnant in the book of Revelation 14, they are not defiled with a woman. And it's only the wine that defiles the body. Now, you see, all these feasts are of the heathens. And the people of God should not celebrate. And in our mission reading, in our previous Sabbath school lessons, they find it possible and they see it no uh, bad things, no bad effects. And they just take all the things. Then they say that it is good for us to be involved in the worldlings, worldly stuff. So my brother, my suggestion to you is this. If you want to be saved, if you want to enter in the kingdom of God, then you should start living for Christ this day. Because the true worshippers are worshipping him in truth and in spirit. So if you think that just because of your name, then you'll be saved. Let me tell you something. Or to whip you with your own, with your own whips. Read the book of Deserve Ages. It says that the tree, the name of a tree, actually will not save it from destruction. So if you just think that because of your name, the seventh day Adventist will save you from the destruction, then you align to yourself. You need to know that the true church of God, it is not a great cathedral or a national establishment, nor a church buildings, nor anyone. But it is a group of people who love God so much that they keep all his commandments. They will never compromise. So, here is my message to you. If you want to be among the 144,000, then you should make a choice. Make a personal challenge this day to do away with all heathens. Heathen customs like Christmas, like birthdays, and all other. You know, but some of you when it comes to such things, you compromise. You just say, no. And I know some of the Adventists, they like to justify. So I will say to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to come to Christ. He is the only person who can teach us all things. Don't listen to what your church is saying to you. It is, there are only two ways. It is Christ or the worlds. You choose yet this day who you want to follow. You choose. At the end of the day, some will, lost, some will be lost in the church, attending church service every Sabbath, Sabbath in, Sabbath out. You'll be paying all your money You'll be paying all your tithe and offerings. But you will be saved in the church. You will be lost in the church. 
And it is going to be so painful because even in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, we'll read from the verse 22 to 23. We now come to a point where we understand that this world will be flooded with the churches that are running in the name of Christ, but using the counterfeit power. And these churches will be doing so much work. And at the end of the day, many people will be lost in the church. So my brother and sisters in Christ, let us, by all means, come to the one who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We come to him on our knees. We ask him to teach us all things. And I believe that it is never too late for us to make things right. Christmas is a pagan holiday. And the Christmas trees has nothing to do with the birth of Christ. So all the people understand the trees and all its decoration. This was a practice which the heathens used to do in the olden days. And now it's found its way in the Christendom. And all Christians now, they cut down trees and worship and all this stuff. Worshipping the pagan gods. On that particular day, many people will consume so much wine and alcohol. And do so many, they consume much gluttony and eat so much things so you can find that this is nothing to do with the birth of christ but it is something to do with the worshiping of paganism pagan gods you decide may the lord help us and I pray that um, may God help us all to know what is really going on and what our leaders, which we are looking up to, are really doing. Every tree shall be known by its fruit. And now the fruits are now being manifested before our very eyes. And I pray that God may open your eyes and ears so that you could see and make the right choices while time permits. Very soon, and uh, I would like to say that we do not know how much time left, but what I know for sure is this. The probation for individuals is soon to close. To some, it's already closed. But now, we are so privileged that God has allowed us, me and you, to be counted among the living. So let us use every given opportunity to make things right while we can. Because tomorrow it is not promised to anyone. So there are many people who are actually planning to make things right tomorrow. They were still postponing and postponing to the call of Christ. But now some they are resting in the graveyards. Some are also still in the mortuaries. But you and I. Are privileged so my brother and my sisters I pray that God may open your hearts and ears so that you can make things right while you can